Hi guys, welcome back to your, my YouTube channel. My name is Ademola Badmos. If this is your first time of uh, coming to my YouTube page, please like and subscribe. And if you find this video helpful, please like as well. Um, this will be the concluding part of our DDD series. If you want to have a comprehensive knowledge of uh, automating in Cypress, I have um, two previous playlists that talks about Cypress and its older versions and Cypress in um, the latest version, Cypress 10. So you could look through that because it would really help you before you jump onto BDD, except you already have um, previous knowledge of um, using Cypress. So let's get right into it. So what we want to do here is um, in the previous class, we've been able to use we use our steps and make sure we use just one file to cover four scenarios. So now we want to use just one scenario to cover four steps. Now, what is worthy of note here is um, when you want to do something like this, you have to consider the fact that are those steps similar? Only if they are very, very similar and they have just little changes, like our own test case here, which fits the particular scenario we have four login scenarios. The only thing different here is the user type and the experience when they log in. We have a standard user, we have a locked out user, we have a problem user, and we have a performance glitch user. And all of them can have a username and password, but they have a different experience after trying to log in. So that case means that there are only two things different. Every other step is the same. So instead of creating four different scenarios we can create one so as usual the previous step the previous um branch has been added to our git optimize the single file so i have not deleted all of this but remember that this is not a good practice i'm only leaving this branches there for you so when i share this repository you can look at the other features i did individually even though the main file as an updated version of everything I've been doing. But how I started and how I changed them, you will see them in all the repositories starting from the number one till the last one. So as usual, we'll create a branch. So we'll do git, we'll use the shortcut. If you want to know other ways of creating a branch, check my first videos about uh, git and um, its usage in um, the first videos video series i made for cypress so this one let's call it single scenarios scenario all right so we have created this branch so in this branch because um, i realized that i usually waste time so i've um, gone ahead i wrote those steps down so i've just copy and paste them um here so let's um create we would not need this anymore we won't need this so let's delete and we won't need this to either so let's delete as well so in here in the integration file we can now create a new file called swags swag labs a new one called swag labs dot feature that will be our feature file now. And then um, we'll create a folder that would fit that swag labs. And inside the swag labs, we we'll create the step definition file. So swags.step.spec.js. So in the feature file, what we will have would look like this. Yeah. So let me explain this. So what we are doing here essentially is we are creating the four steps, the four scenarios using just one scenario. And the syntax to do that is we use a scenario outline. So what are we doing essentially here? The different steps are written this way. You understand if you remove the quotes it will still work the same way i just like to put the quote because it works for me and um, i've actually 
worked with some ids that uh, does not allow me to use the code like when i worked on a webstone um id i did not have to use the code and it worked equally fine so what we've done here is we created the steps such that it will be unique for it will be generic for all the four um scenarios so at every point in time when the step is needed it will be called right so if you remember in our common step where's our common steps in our common steps we already have the click login button we already have the insert password and we already have the launch page which are the three common ones so the remaining two is to insert the username and get the kind of experience so for now we can comment out this particular step because we will not need it at this point so um what we need to do is get into the swag steps and create the step needed there are only two steps we need to create the insert user and the and the experience so you can see that it is actually similar to what's in the common steps it is similar to what it is what is in the common set it is not it is needless to say that if i put it in the common steps it won't work it would work if i put it in the common steps but i just want to create a separate step for it so you can see differently what has been done so all i did here was um use the um the last experience for each one of them like i had written separately in the previous files you will check the repo and you see it so i have them just all written like this so with that done if we open our runner we have this layer let's close this and relaunch it i don't know why maybe it's trust issues so i'm just i've op i've opened that for a very long time so i feel that maybe i don't know i just wanted to start it all over again now that i have a reason for it let's blame it on trust issues so i run this right now as you can see it's created example and it's running the steps for us successfully so we will go back there and we explain one more time before we push that final repo and i will share the repository in this video so to explain this one more time the syntax is such that you make it generic but the types that are the parts that are different you would put them here in the scenario now one thing that is important to note is my implementation is just to make it explicit there are some implementations that you would not even need to write all these lines of code based on the particular scenario you are testing you will not need to write all these lines of code you will just need to write one single line because the values you are putting in your examples the values you are putting in your examples are actually the actual username okay now uh, let's try something like that let's copy these examples let's comment it out let's just try it for the user type all right so for user type let's paste this and instead of having the standard what's it called here we just have the actual username standard user this is a lot out user and this is a problem user and um, why is he adding something for us we didn't ask for this so remove this problem user and this one is a performance performance glitch user all right so now that we have done that let us modify the step so the step let's just copy comment out then paste so instead of having all these switch statements we will not need any switch statement and we will not need a fixture file. 
we won't need it all we we'll just need is just one of it now what we we'll have here is um let's control z this first i've copied something i shouldn't have copied so let's do this and uh, instead of having um standard or something we just have user type here all right yeah i think this should work so let's format the document i like things formatted where is the format document here yeah. so we want to use this to represent it what have we done wrong here it's already crashing so there is something that we must have done wrong if it crashes but let's see as you can see it works it works very well so that saves you more lines of code it's just about your preference i intentionally did it that way earlier on to just show you that you can still have those reusable tests that you reusable steps that we did in the previous video and use the scenario outline to to uh, implement it but we can all agree that this is a shorter implementation it makes things it makes you write less code which is one of the control z what did i just do so uh, which one is one of the most important parts of the um, of um, BDD, it allows you to write little or no, it allows you to write very, very, very few lines of code. So in the same vein, if you can find a way to implement this like that, you can do it that way. But I'm just trying to let you understand that as the examples are, let us format this, it's all scattered. So. As the examples are, there are some examples that, based on their peculiarity, you can pass their actual value here. Now, this I can argue that it is wrong because I am exposing the username. This is the actual username. So I'm exposing the username. So I can decide to implement something different to still keep the username and be referencing the username from an environment variable while I'm using a scenario outline. So in that case, it means I can use something already implemented here. So um, let me add a comment to it. Well, you would also watch the video so you can understand why this is commented out. But um, uh, one implementation, first, implementation first approach let's just use an approach wow and there are several other ways you can use a scenario outline actually i'm just showing you a few of it to introduce you to it so now that we have come to the end of the videos um one last thing i just need to say here is you can use this video to introduce yourself to automation but in order to get very good at automation you need to practice constantly use several sites at your disposal just automate basic things and use the best practices try to form try to implement page object models and you will be fine essentially you will be fine one more thing we don't need a fixture folder here because we are not calling anything from the fixtures so let us remove that part of um, having a up high so to speak so which is part of the job of the kiwi you should have a keen eye and write um, neater codes. So with this, we have come to the end of the series for BDD. Thank you for, if you got here, please, I appreciate you. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and recommend to friends. Thank you and bye-bye.